In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a pre-trained model to train it on your data. So here, I'm back in the classification folder, and I'm going to open uh, the training notebook um, with a mobile net B2 architecture. I open it. This, so as I, as I told you before, it's always organized the same way. So I'm going to first load everything we need. And then we're going to define the parameters. Now in the parameters, we see that we have more. First one does the same. Training directory, validation directory, output directory from the model, number of channels, number of classes, imaging field. That's exactly what it wants. And then we can do transfer learning. So the first option is to do transfer learning with the last layer. So it means that we're gonna um, we're gonna initialize the mobile VNet uh, network with the weights that have been uh, trained on the image net, which is uh, you know the data sets with uh, normal images. And the goal is to classify um, cats, dogs, buildings, cars, etc. When we do that, all the other weights, except the last layer, all the other weights are frozen. Then we can also uh, train the last block, and all previous weights are frozen, or we can train everything, and all the weights are frozen before. If I check all of them, what's going to happen is that first the last layer is going to be trained, and all the other ones are going to be frozen, and with this number of epochs and this learning rate. Then the last block uh, waits going to be unfrozen. And we're going to train the last block and the last layer with this number of epochs and this value for the learning rate. And finally, all the weights will be unfrozen. And it's going to be trained with this number of epochs and this value for the learning rate. So as, it, as you see, when, when we do that, it's called um, fine tuning. In, in machine learning, and most of the time we're going to have uh, less epochs and a higher value when you start. And when you, the 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 more weights you're going to have, the more layers you're going to have, the more you know the the longest large number of epochs, but with a uh, learning rate, it's going to be lower. So what I'm going to do. As before, I'm going to train with several sets of parameters. I'm going to do the same thing as before for, for, trainings, uh, for training sets of parameters. And I'm going to change the learning rate. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to train the last layer. And we'll see what we get by just training the last layer. So here, training directory is the same than before. It's going to be an adenocarcinoma no, training. Validation, adenocarcinoma no, validation. And then the output directory is uh, models, but I already have trained four different models with the MNIST architecture without transfer learning. And so we have the channels, two classes. And here you should change it to 224 because that's the size of the images uh, that are used in uh, ImageNet. And as we are using but, uh, so in transfer learning, so it should be the same size. If you don't change it as the algorithm know that you're doing transfer learning with ImageNet, it's going to automatically put it to 224. But it makes sense to, you know, it shows that you are understanding what you do. If you train your model with an imaging field size, and then you transfer this model with other data set. We should still have the same making field size. And so I'm going to do 20 epochs at one. For the first set of parameters. Then, same thing, adenocarcinoma training, adenocarcinoma validation. Three channels, two classes, sorry. Or in that case, 20 epochs, but with zero, zero, one. 
Ten sin Chalas two cases, two point four, two point four. Form and finally main addition. Next. And I'm going to trim it. All right. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to speed up the video so I don't have to wait for the training. training. All right, it's done. So uh, again, you can look at the values this way, but it's easier to use TensorFlow. So I'm gonna run TensorFlow. So sometimes when you run it the first time, it doesn't um, it's reactive. So then you can stop it and run it again. Yeah, it worked. So it showed everything, all the curves what we had before. So I'm gonna remove everything and just look at the. Um, of the training I did uh, with uh, mobile two, so it's going to be one second. But the first. First thing here with very um, low value, and it's similar to what we had before. We see that accuracy, um, the validation is never changing. So here, clearly, it's not converging, and I have all of my images and validation in the data set are uh, classified as just one class. So this didn't work. And with a different learning rate, this is what we get. That looks better, but not great. Definitely not great. We see that um, now we're having something because values are changing. So it's better than before where everything was classified as the same. But still, that's not converging. It's just, uh, it's not really diverging, but it's, it's, it's just going on. And that's not. Uh, Stephanie doesn't look like it's right. So that's, that was for a learning rate of 0 0.01. If we go to a learning rate of 0 0.00, here we see we have something that is much, much better. The accuracy is slowly converging for the training and also for the validation, and the loss is decreasing. The values are pretty, uh, pretty similar, so we, we might have some other fitting, but not that much. And if we look at the last, so I'm going to leave these guys. So now I have, uh, so training here in gray and green is for value of 0 0.0001, and this orange and blue is for uh, 1 e minus 6. And we can see that it's also converging, but not as fast as the other one. It's so probably here we have some underfeeding. Uh, we definitely don't have underfeeding, the values are very similar. And here, I don't think we have underfeeding, even though. Uh, so, first of all, it might be interesting to uh, try with more efforts. We just did 20 methods, which is not that, that many. Maybe more epics would help, and also maybe some data migration. We'll see that in the next, uh, next training. Uh, something else you can look at yet is how uh, uh, the learning rate is changing. Uh, because here we have something that for five epics, the validation is not decreasing, then we divide it by two. And so we started at one and minus four here for, for this. 
this parameter. And it's, you know, add to term it, to the number that's split, uh, was divided by two, and then again by two, but still we are not, uh, we could, we could keep going like this, go a little bit um, to a smaller value. So this also indicates somehow that uh, you don't have enough methods. And, and here, it never change. So that's the same, same idea. So we should use more epochs here. However, we're just going to try uh, to see what we get here directly. We see that the validation is about 90% accuracy. So that's much better than what we had with the end list.